Hey, everybody, welcome to episode number 34 of the Debt Free Dad podcast. So, a question for you today Should personal finance be taught in schools? Now, there are so many people that I've spoken with over the years that say they would be much better off if they took more money related subjects in high school and even college. But is teaching personal finance in schools a good idea? And is that really the solution? to the money struggles in today's society. We're going to be talking all about these questions on today's show. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Debt-Free Dad Podcast, where we're helping normal, everyday people learn how to save money and kick debt so they can live a happier and stress-free life. Now here's your host, Debt-Free Dad, Brad Nelson. Hey, how's everyone doing today? You can find me on Facebook, Pinterest, YouTube, and Instagram. Just search Brad Nelson, Debt Free Dad, and welcome to today's show. So this whole conversation about how to fix the current financial dilemmas that most people are facing today usually goes back to education. And we share a lot of common statistics here on this show. And if you've been listening to our show for a while, you've heard these before, but we're going to share them again. And and here's what the problem is. And this is why this conversation of, hey, does, does education play a part in how people are handling their money as adults? And some of the statistics that we share is, number one, 78% of people right now are living paycheck to paycheck according to careerbuilder.com, which means about almost eight out of 10 households are depending on their next paycheck to survive. According to a Go Banking Rates survey done back in November of 2019, so we're talking less than a year ago, probably about eight or nine months ago as the time we're recording this, uh, 45% of people reported that they had $0 in a savings account and 24% said that they had less than $1,000. Two-thirds of Americans can't pass a basic financial literacy test. And that's according to the Financial Industry Regulatory Hang with me for a second. We're still going. Authority Inc.'s Investor Education Foundation's most recent study of the financial capability in the U.S. Man, is that a tongue twister. (laughs) (laughs) And then according to the American Psychological Association, money and personal finance are one of the common causes of stress and anxiety. And we've had a whole show talking about how finances can cause a lot of stress in your life. And then how does that stress affect other areas of your life. Make sure you check that out if you're interested. And then lastly, money and personal finance are one of the leading causes of money fights in marriages, and it's also one of the leading causes of divorce in the United States. So the question really is, is then what is the solution? What's the ultimate solution to this? And the answers for a lot of people are typically, hey, we need to be doing better education, which surprise, surprise, that's what this show is really all about. It's really just helping you with the basic fundamentals. But let's push this further. Is is education in, say, even in elementary school, middle school, high school, college, are these really the answers? I think those are the immediate knee-jerk reactions. Wouldn't you guys agree? I think I think we I think we've grown accustomed as a society in general, especially in the United States, is we push we just pile more on teachers. I do feel bad for them sometimes because it's like everything that we seem to uh, need or we feel like the kids don't have enough of. We just expect uh, the schools to fix that. If they go to school and the teachers teach them these things, then they'll magically uh, get better at those things. If we keep just making the teachers teach more stuff. Well, I think they could get rid of some of the subjects that are in there, though, and put in some financial teaching education uh, because some of the, some of the subjects they don't need them later on. <laughs> <laughs> Give me that, one, that's just my opinion. <laughs> Give me one subject in high school that you don't use today, Amber. English. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Geography? <laughs> like you could teach a financial course all around that. And you don't need geography unless you're going into some sort of field that might need it. Yeah. I, and it's it's funny. When I when I went out, I did a tour last year with a company that I partner with. And when I would get on stage, I asked every audience, I went to about 20 cities and I asked every audience before I started my conversation with them. And I said, how many of you would much rather have taken a personal finance class like we're about to all go through than say like, advanced algebra or trigonometry or or some crazy science classes that you just never really used for where you're at today as an adult. And almost everybody in the room raises their hand. 
I, I think a lot of people can relate to what you just said, Amber, is that, man, looking at a lot of the stuff that I took in high school, it would have been much better to do some of the more of this practical stuff, things like, you know, personal finance, how to do a budget, how to save, you know, things we're going to talk about here, insurance even, you know, just some of the basic things that we all need as adults. But let's let's look at the facts right now. What is happening in schools right now? 21 states now require high school students to take a course that integrates personal finance content, which is good. This is actually improving year after year where more states and more school districts are getting on board with this idea of, of teaching more of this stuff in school. Six states actually require a standalone course, and these, these two facts come from the Council for Economic Education, which is which is great. So it's a whole entire course just talking about money and personal finance. Research conducted by two economists at the um, at Montana State University, Carly Urban and Christina Stoddard, indicated that state-mandated financial education high school graduation requirements create more responsible student loan borrowers. It increases applications for aid and the likelihood of obtaining grants and scholarships, and their analysis finds that more students finance their educations through low-interest federal Stafford loans, and fewer students rely upon high-interest credit card debt. So that's a really good fact. And I mean, obviously, there's a lot of statistics out there in Google and stuff. You can get more and more into this. But I think these three facts alone are enough to kind of have this conversation here today. And, and really, what we want to really debate is, is our schools the ultimate answer to the personal finance problems that most people are facing in today's society? And I'll kick it off, guys. I think they play a part in the solution. I don't think... They are the entire solution by any means whatsoever. I, I don't I don't think I would ever feel comfortable letting the school, whether it's private or a public school, uh, be completely 100% responsible for teaching my kids on how to manage their finances. But I think they they definitely can play a part in the solution. So teaching basic fundamentals like, the basic math requirements, and they get that already in school, which is great. But talking about things on how to figure out like what you're going to pay an interest on loans and debt, um, saving, you know, what is compound interest and how does compound interest work for you today? And how does it work for you more importantly in 40 years when you consistently save month after month, year after year, and you start working towards things like retirement? Uh, investing. Uh, balancing a budget, balancing your checkbook. I mean, I think all of these things are are really great things to share, but I don't think that's the only thing that's going to help people change their personal finances and, and help them in life. No, but it's definitely, like you said, it's a great start. It's somewhere to start from. And um, that's like anything, though, that they, you te they teach in school or preschool or wherever. You don't want them to be raising your children. They're helping. Um, but we've got to ultimately step in and be that deciding factor, that that person that's going to help them guide them through life to be financially free. Yeah, it's hard for me because I've 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 I'm so I'm one of those states where my kids have been in a personal finance course in high school and the stuff they would come home and say, especially after kind of going through this, getting out of debt, being really focused, it blows your mind about what they're actually being taught. Um, because I think what we, I, and maybe uh, you two would agree, but I think we all look at, I mean, for me, debt and money is a large majority of it is behavior. It's not about the knowledge piece. It is a, there's a piece of that. A piece of it is knowledge. Yes, you need to know how to do those things. But the behavior towards money, um, my son would come home and say, yeah, they talked about credit cards today and how she, you should only use them in an emergency. And I said, well, what did he say was an emergency? Well, like tires for your car. And I'm just like, that's not an emergency. <laughs> so, although I appreciate the fact that they are trying to teach them, when you go back to that statistic, 78% of people are paycheck to paycheck. It doesn't say 78% of people who are not teachers, those same teachers are paycheck to paycheck. So how they think and behave with money is how they're going to interpret things and then teach your kids about money. So if they think, tires are an emergency. That's what they're going to learn is tires are an emergency, even though that's something you should be saving for and not be like, Oh my gosh, I had no idea my tires would go bad. 
you, yes, you do. <laughs> That's what, when you buy a car, you should plan for that. So we've had a lot of discussions at the house about, well, let's talk about that. And I want to run the teacher through the mud. He's doing his, the best they can, but that's hard for me. It's hard for me to just entrust it to a teacher to teach my kids when that teacher could be horrible with money. Yeah. And see, and I think that's where um, you're kind of picking up on the second half of, of where this needs to go is that a, a lot of this needs to be facilitated at home as well. Probably even more so. And and here's the thing. Um, and Ryan, you kind of you kind of jumped the gun because we were going to talk about behavior, but let's talk about it right now. I think you know when it, when it comes to behavior and personal finance, and when it comes to our kids, the the school can teach them whatever they want to teach them. You can verbally teach your kids whatever you want to teach them, but they are going to learn more by watching you than they are by anything you're going to tell them or anything a teacher is going to tell them. So that's why I think school is a part of it but it isn't the most important part of it. The most important part of it is at home. It's like you, Ryan, saying that we got to sit down and we got to have these discussions about what you just learned in school um, about, hey, credit cards are used for emergencies and this is what they said was the emergency. It's like, no, it ain't. And here's why that's not right. And I, I, I totally agree with that approach. I think though that's the approach. Those are the conversations that need to be having at home. But here's the thing. Let's say you have that conversation. Let's say the teacher tells him that at school, but then you turn around a week later and you have an emergency and you pull out a credit card and you use a credit card. What what you think is more teachable to that kid? It's the action. It's not the words that were used to tell him. You know, so uh, that's where this all kind of comes into play with what we're doing here on this podcast and what could be done in schools. It's got to be a joint effort. It can't be, well, it could be just staying at home, but I think it could be really helpful if it was also taught at schools and, and you're hearing it from both sides for sure. I don't want to like put it out there. Like, you know, teachers shouldn't teach it. I mean, I think they can do a phenomenal job at teaching it. I just think that um, it, it's just, there's so much at play here when you think through like, <laughs> uh, you know, especially in the U S we're just a debt based economy. I mean, the whole economy is based on people going into debt. I mean, that's how, if everyone tomorrow said, we're not going to do any more debt, our economy would just, it would have a really hard time with that switch. Yeah. Um, and so I think when you look at how schools are funded, how, you know, they're funded by the government from local state, they usually don't have any money. So when people, when those teachers are going to get resources to teach, they're going to find resources that are free. And a lot of those free resources are guests from where? Yep. <laughs> Discover card will be more than happy to give you a free resource to teach your kids about money. And guess what? It's actually decent stuff, but it is always going to be geared towards how to borrow and, and go into debt. It's never going to be about how to do what we say in this podcast and be debt free. That's correct. hundred percent what it's going to be geared towards. Correct. Absolutely. In, in my opinion, if they wanted to properly do it in schools, and, and this is why I think it would be difficult, because a lot of schools run into budgeting issues, being able to pay for a lot of the curriculums and things that could be offered. And who's there to step up? Just like Ryan said, the financial industry will step up and they'll put the curriculums together. And, and that's where I think that the information then starts to get a little misleading. Um, uh, a perfect example of this is uh, my son, Noah, who is now 10. He was in second grade. He brought home his second grade social studies book. And in the social studies book, is very similar to what Ryan's son's teacher told them. But it was in, he was talking about a story about a farmer and how the farmer uh, was paying for his goods and ran his farming business. But then towards the end, it said that the farmer ran out of money and he had to use a credit card to make a purchase. And then that was the end of it. Right. But it didn't talk about the risks of using that credit card. It didn't <laughs> didn't talk about interest rates. It didn't talk about like what happens Come if you on, don't Brad, we're in elementary school. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but but it but didn't I get even your point. But it didn't even like share that there was any sort of risk to that. But at a young age like that, you're already introducing the idea that it's okay to use a credit card if you don't have money. And and I just one hundred percent don't agree with that. So what did I do with my second grade son? I sat him down. I said, this is wrong. You you don't use a credit card if you don't have money. <laughs> you just don't make the purchase. <laughs> so he, you know, he knows you already have those conversations. 
but but you're right. I think the the more the financial industry gets their hands in the mix as this becomes more popular and 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 widespread in the school districts and in the states uh, in here in the United States is that I think you're going to find that more and more of these curriculums are not necessarily going to be sponsored, but are going to be offered and given to the schools from these companies. And I just, ah, man, there's a lot of scariness involved with that, in my opinion. Well, ultimately, though, it's got to be the parents who, like you said, the behavior showing them, you know, what you're doing and and just kind of correcting some of the values you don't believe to be in those curriculums. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. I think that's the that's the challenge is you just can't turn a blind. You can't, we, you can't expect schools to do it and then turn a blind eye and think that that fixed the problem because I mean, yes, it might give them some information, but typically information isn't what I was lacking. (laughs) I needed to stop going to Disney world and charging it every time. (laughs) Right, right, right. And I think, you know, the, when when it, when it when it comes to the relationship between school and home, I think both sides are failing right now. Obviously, it's not being shared enough in schools, but it's also not being taught enough at the home in the home at the home level either. And I know this for from our own personal experience, but also just from working with uh, thousands of people that have gone through roots, talking to people over the years, and and a lot of them say, "Brett, I was never shown how to." save. I was never shown how to budget. I was always taught that debt was normal and that when you wanted to buy things, you were always going to have payments. And that's going to be where a lot of the lessons are going to be learned is at home. So as we talk about this idea of education, here's the other thing, guys, and, and I didn't even put this in today's notes, but it's something for everyone to consider that's an adult that's out there right now. And this is one of the reasons why we do this podcast is that education doesn't stop after high school and college. And I think we've got to get that through our heads as adults that we've got to be thinking, especially when it comes to one of the most important resources that we have at our disposal, which is money. We've got to be committed to educating ourselves about this resource. We've got to be committed to to learning more about it. How can we use money to better our life? Um, and, And if more adults were committed to that type of mindset and mentality, I think we'd see a lot more people not struggling with money. But it just comes down to a a lack of accountability and a lack of just self-education. And I think, again, it starts in, in school. And I think that's where school can help is that if school is already teaching this stuff, as you get out to high school and college, I would want to say that the more you've already been educated, the more you're going to want to learn about it as you're an adult, because you're going to see how much that education has helped you start out your life. So Ryan, let's go back and, and talk a little bit about this whole, you know, behavior thing you brought up. And and like I said, you kind of jumped the gun because it was the last point of what we wanted to talk about here today. But but Ryan's right. Money isn't about math and it's not about just these basic concepts concepts. It's it's really all about your behavior and your relationship with money. And and I think one of the best places to teach that behavioral side of money is at home. And things like patience, having the patience to save up and pay cash for something. Uh, things like contentment, and this is something I'm oh, I'm working so hard with our kids on. Well, well, no, I wouldn't say Avery yet. She's not even two, but she'll be there too. But no, I mean, it's like he's always thinking about the next thing, the next thing I get, the next thing. It's like, dude, you need to just appreciate and be grateful for what's like sitting right in front of you and stop always looking for the next thing or you're never going to be happy, right? But contentment, uh, things like sacrifice, understanding that there's opportunity costs with purchases, delaying pleasure, gratitude. And again, all of these things are are learned behaviors that you can easily share with your kids as they're young and as they grow up to be adults. And I think this is probably, well, it is. It is the most important part of money and personal finance. I've said this a lot on here, but uh, my oldest just paid his first semesters college tuition and so everything you just talked about patience contentment sacrifice delay and pre- uh, pleasure gratitude you know he got his first job when he just turned 16 and right for you know we were kind of going through this debt thing and we really started preaching to him like hey just start putting money away start putting money away you're gonna you know i don't want you to have to go in a bunch of debt for school and we just kept kind of pushing that and pushing that um his car it just recently broke it cost him a lot of money he was able to pay cash for it and he's just like, man, I can't wait to get a new car. But he's like, I don't want one right now because my goal is to get out of school. And so for us, it's been very, um, 
it's just very encouraging to us to know that we've kind of instilled those values. You know, um, our youngest, if you go upstairs, like he'll, he saves his money, like nobody's business. And it's crazy to me because when I was little, my parents gave me five bucks. It was gone in a second. <laughs> I mean, I was at the convenience store buying candy and playing arcade games. I mean, I couldn't keep money for nothing. Um, cause I didn't learn those habits, but, um, I mean, all of that is, I mean, it's really what we've been preaching at home and to watch our kids to be able to model some of that behavior now. Um, I, I a hundred percent agree. If I would have expected schools to do that and then we just kept doing what we'd been doing that got us into so much debt. I think, I don't think they'd be anywhere where they are right now. I think they'd, my son would be borrowing money for school because that's what we do. It's what we would have just assumed you do. Right. And there's, and there's a lot of schools that teach that too. There's not there's not very many schools that I that I have heard that have a really great curriculum on teaching their kids to go to college debt free. <laughs> right. I haven't no, heard never. of one. I haven't heard of one. <laughs> um, but it's it's funny, Ryan, that you say your your youngest is a good saver because Noah is a good saver too. He's he's been really good at it, and uh, we've also been giving him money to kind of practice and learn how to make purchases and get change and and he's messed up a few times, but it's it's a great it's a great learning tool. It's, it's so much fun. And, and that kind of brings us to our next episode. Cause you might be listening to this and be like, okay, I, I get that schools could play a part of this, but the big responsibility, sorry, parents out there, it lies on our shoulders. It really, really does. So what are some things that you could do to start teaching your kids based on their age about money and personal finance? So that way when they become adults, that they, they are equipped, they have the right tools and they know what they should be doing. And that's going to be coming up all on the next episode. So make sure you take a listen to that as well. Hey, imagine a life without payments and debt. I'm telling you, it's possible. Now, I recently launched an incredible free workshop that will walk you through the first steps to reaching a stress-free and debt-free life. Now, the information that we're sharing inside this workshop has helped people save and pay off millions of dollars. And we've had thousands of people now register for this workshop. Now, I was broke at one time too. But by following a simple process, I paid off all of my debts and I now live completely debt-free. And getting out of debt, it's not an easy road. This is hard work. So I know also what works and what doesn't work. And that's why we created this fantastic success path that's removing all of the confusion. And it's helping ordinary people have massive results. And I just want to share our success path with you in this workshop. Now, the goal of the workshop is really simple. We want to help you reduce stress. We want to provide you immediate and clear direction. Also give you some really helpful insights and give you some really cool tips to help you discover some of the first steps, some of the first things that you should work on as you get on the road to financial freedom. So head on over to the real debtfreedad.com, click on tools and courses in the menu and get free access to this course today. Hey, hey, what's inside? See, I thought this was a party. Let's dance. All right, all right. It is time for the celebrations of the show. And remember, these celebrations are all people who are working that same success path that you just heard in that commercial and are reaching financial freedom. We're going to kick it off with Vona Sue Robbins Haynes. We set our monthly budget for the first time ever. Congratulations to you guys. Such a huge win and such a huge first step. Great, great job. Jill Flickinger Brown saved four hundred dollars for food and gas for our mini vacation in September. Now it's totally covered. Awesome, paid paid for vacation. I love that. Uh, Lori Hester, I put two hundred dollars in my savings and paid off the last four hundred dollars on one loan. There you go, Lori. Great job, Christy Wright. Paid off three credit cards this week and have a flash sale going on that's currently at fifteen hundred dollars in sales. One more small card left, and then it will all be about tackling the bigger ones. And she's been working so hard. Congratulations to you, Christy. That's great. Rhonda Moore. I usually order out at least three to four times a week, sometimes twice a day. This week we cooked all our meals, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And it came in handy as an unexpected, unexpectedly had to get $900 in car repairs that I paid in cash. That is such a bummer, but seriously, those are like bittersweet celebrations. I hate the car repairs. (laughs) <laughs> they suck. They do. They are not fun, but great job on eating at home. That's awesome. Uh, and Brittany Hefferman, I have one payment left on my credit card. I am so close. I can taste it. My car will be paid off in 16 payments, but I am determined to beat that. Yeah, that's awesome. Nothing like a paid for 
vehicle. It drives so much better, and it's uh, just so stress-free. Love it. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us here today. We love your feedback, and it also helps us grow our YouTube show. So please give us a like or leave us some honest feedback here. We would love to connect with you. And if you want the latest from the show, be sure to hit that notification bell and subscribe to our channel. And oh, by the way, if you heard that commercial about our Life Without Payments free course, you can head over and find that at therealdebtfreedad.com. Just click on Tools and Courses, and you'll have access to all of our free tools right there. We'll see you guys on an upcoming show.